Hello everybody, my name's Dick Coughlin and as you can see from my new wardrobe, Soros, that Soros check finally came through. Oh yes. That, so, sorry it's been a while, I've been, I've been busy doing other things and I have been preparing lots of videos so hopefully should have a bit more regular content. I know I say that a lot but you know what, I'm gone so you know. Anyway, I, I think we need to take a break ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to take a break, we need to take a relax because sometimes this world gets too much and you need to go to a place where everybody else is to blame and that's called the daily mail online comment section it's not the craziest it's not the most you know ridiculously offensive it's not the most insane it's not yeah but it is it's got the perfect balance of every and i just like to go through there and read the insane dribbling fucking just bonkers mental you know you know ramblings of the insane hateful bigots who find anything who, who have olympic standards when it comes to blaming everyone else in the fucking world for their problems especially immigration exactly uh, i've got a selection of comments here and i'm just going to go through them and so you guys can see because the thing about the daily mail is as crazy as this world that we live in now is the one thing you've got to remember if you're not aware of this the Daily Mail has been like this since day one. The, what you're seeing here, these aren't people who are get, catching on with the old trigger the libs. No, these fuckers are OG. They were doing it. They don't do it because it's just a, just because it's cool or trendy. They do it for the love. They do it for the love of the game, and they're in the comment section, so they're not even getting paid for this shit, right? They're keeping it, they're keeping it 100. So let's carry on. Let's just start with a couple of random comments, you know, probably I imagine regarding Brexit. Now I've heard lots of crazy and insane weird reasons that people have, uh, you know, come up with for leaving the EU from three pin plugs to fucking yogurt, tomatoes, fucking newspaper wrap fish and chips. But this one might be the most disturbing one. It's from Tarquin34 in Bath, but it's got a small B, so I don't know if he's just in the bath when he sent this. But he, 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 he posted in the Daily Mail comment section, Now we are leaving the EU, we should bring back capital punishment and not just for adults. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, because the great thing about Brexit is finally, finally, we now we've got rid of these PC... You know, nutters. Now we've got rid of these, like these, this evil totalitarian organisation. Finally, we can get back to the good old days when we used to murder children. And here's the worrying thing about that comment: it's got thirty thumbs up and five thumbs down. That's one in six. Only one in six people who read the Daily Mail disagree with that. The next, this next one is a guy who kind of, I think, you know, of all the people I've seen who just don't seem to understand how this all works this guy is taking it to a new level right this guy needs to call james o'brien he goes by the name black current bob and he claims to be in munich for work mm, yeah reconnaissance i think uh, he writes we should refuse to engage with the eu until they give us the exact deal we want which is no deal your move junker mate no de okay do you understand that like you know what they when they say no deal do you know what no deal means no deal means literally no deal no deal is not a deal. Well, the EU aren't sat it's all that we can sit there if you want a no deal just sit there with your thumb up your fucking ass which Boris Johnson could have done and achieved just as much as he already has done you don't even know what no deal you think no deal is a deal what do you think no deal is if no deal is a deal i'm, I'm nothing Stay in, stay in Germany. This next comment is from I'm Free Mr. Grace, who no, in, who lives in what used to be called London. I think it still is called London. I don't know. I mean, unless there's been some major coup in the last half hour while I've been setting this video up. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it's still called London. Right now, it starts off with just the best through Because he's this close, right? The first three words of this comment are so close. If he just switched the, uh, the end to... It would have been perfect. BJ needs Farage. No, I think you'll find it's Farage who needs a BJ. For the GE, that's general election, it's the only way to pick off the Tory traitors. We will do the rest and hang them. Yes, are we going to hang them? And some kids, just throw some kids in there as well. Get talking soon. Yes, get talking and start want to murder people. I just want to fucking kill everyone.
Now, one of the most traumatic things that happened recently for white people was the news that Disney were going to be doing a one of their live-action remakes of one of their old classic films, and they had picked um, uh, to play The Little Mermaid, uh, a young woman who I've obviously never heard of because I'm too fucking old, who is apparently a, a, a protege of Beyonce, uh, called Haley, called called Hallie, Hallie Bailey. Hey, or Halle Bailey or whatever that. Now, I'm sure this is just, it's just a cartoon. It's just a Disney film. I'm sure it won't be a big deal. Let's see, let's see what the, you know, Daily Mail comments, commenters had to say about, you know, a young black woman playing, uh, you know, the live action version of Ariel from Little Mermaid, who is a mermaid, by the way, who isn't even a fish. Ugh. Ariel is a red headed white girl. This seems like pandering and PC to the one millionth degree. One millionth degree. And yes, I'd have the same reaction if they chose some white girl to play Tiana. Except you wouldn't really. This is literally John Wayne as fucking Genghis, Genghis Khan. So let's just not fuck around there. Next, let's have a look at some more. Disney will have to explain to the children that Ariel spent too much time a lot of time on the beach sunbathing. Well, doesn't that kind of make sense that, you know, that of all the creatures in the world that don't exist, the one that would probably be sunbathing a lot more would be a fucking mermaid? I'm just, I, again, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. So, you know, who the fuck do I know? Disney hates gingers. Progress. Everything I loved is being destroyed by SJW liberal crap. It's everything I loved. Now this next comment got me thinking, right? You might just listen, hear him out, right? God, what's next? Tom Cruise playing Nelson Mandela? Don't know about you. I'd be up for that. I would be totally up because there is casting white people in, in roles that are normally you would expect to see um, a non-white person, but then there's that. There is casting Tom Cruise. And I don't want Tom Cruise in blackface. I don't want him made to look like... I want just Tom Cruise as Tom Cruise. I want him to just have him there. I would be totally up for that. This is actually ridiculous. PC gone too far now. What do you mean now? You lot have been saying PC political correctness has gone mad for as long as I can remember. The, as long as... You know, for the, 30 years, I have heard nothing but PC gone mad and it's gone too far. How is this the tipping point? How is Ariel being played by... How is that the fucking point that it's gone too far? Now, Fight Them Back you know, has come up with an actual sort of alternative. He's come up with... Rather than just whinging, he's come up with a way, a sort of alternative solution. They could have kept the original Little Mermaid and make her a friend and still give her an important role as a black mermaid. Oh God, why aren't you right in, Fight Dem? See, there you go. Yeah, you could have it, you can be the, and I like the fact that what's interesting is the fact he spelt black, B-L hyphen hyphen A-C-K, as if that would make, as if his comment would somehow not be, a, like that would, that would be censored, right? The Little Mermaid has been around for a while now, and everyone knows what she looks like. Disney went wrong here. I love, I love Hallie and her sister, uh, and her sister song Warrior, but she, that's just words now. This isn't even, this is just incoherent drivel. Why would they change such an iconic look as a proud redhead? I'm pretty disappointed. Imagine. You don't get more in the minority than us redheads. Okay, first of all, she spelt that reedheads, which is quite funny, which is ironic because that's probably one thing you're not very good at. Anyway, so uh, not that long ago in London, it was Pride. You know, there was Pride marches all over the place. And, uh, to, you know, there was one obviously in London. And this is how the Daily Mail reported on it, which is actually quite sort of just neutral. Thousands of revellers transform London into a rainbow of colour. Question, as opposed to what? A rainbow of... Thousands transform London into rainbow for cities largest ever. Right, so this is the largest ever pride thing. Now you'd think, wouldn't you, that they, they'd be getting behind this one. This is good, isn't it? Because they love... You know, when, when they talk about, you know, when they talk about Islam, they always love bringing up the fact that they hate gay people over there, don't they? They love bringing that up. They love mentioning that fact. And whenever they had Milo on their side, they loved pushing Milo forward and going, look at this, or whenever they had... You know, they, they, so they, I'm sure that this will... I'm sure they've moved on from that. It's a little bit 
past it, innit? I wish I could wear tones and tones of bombs. I blast those Satans in pieces. That stupidity I can't tolerate. It's bombs and I make London doomed. Right. I mean, right, if it was coherent, would actually, could actually justify this guy getting arrested. That sounds like a fucking threat of violence. That sounds like a terrorist threat there. But he's... It's so, it's such a pile of babbling fucking bullshit that he would actually get away with it because there's, no, I'm not even sure what he's trying to say there. Guy L. Usher says, this is something to celebrate? Not in my book. What, your book is it? What, the book, Why I Like to Do It With Girls by a man called Guy, who, a guy who, a man whose name is literally Guy Usher, Gusher. Your name is Gusher. That's just, you know, nominative determinism, see? You're a spewing, spitting cunt and that's what you are. Time for our straight pride festivals. These are getting out of hand. How would you be? First of all, they tried that. They've been trying a straight pride festival but since about 2013. Guess what? No one goes to it because even though you say you want one, deep down you know you don't, you're not going to go to it, do you? Because you know what people are going to think of you if you turn up at a straight pride festival. And you've... Well done, Sadiq. Families across London are dropping their children's coffins into the ground whilst you virtue signal to Lady Gaga. Okay, there's so much in that one. Families across London are dropping their children's coffin. Don't drop your coffin. If it's your kid's coffin, don't drop them into the ground. Fucking, you know, there's a, they lower them or something. You know, don't, don't drop. And what, what's Sadiq Khan supposed to do about that, by the way? You know, I mean... He didn't personally murder the fucking kid. Is he supposed to go to every single kid's funeral in London? While he's virtue signalling? What? what uh, you're, you're sat there going, how dare you? How dare you? There are people's family. How dare you be so disgusting and disrespectful and virtue signalling? You are literally virtue signalling your ass off here. Common sense ought to tell you that this is wrong. They lack common sense. So God will intervene shortly would not want to be in their shoes when God says enough. So you're telling me that God can tolerate this. So, so God, God sat there going, no, this isn't an acceptable amount of gay so far. If God isn't doing it, and if God isn't said enough, then what are you complaining about? Revelers or unraveled? That makes no sense. Literally no sense. Thank God they can't breed. Well, actually they can. You notice there's always, this is the biggest one ever. So where are they coming from? Oh, of course, they recruit, don't they? Yes. This social media fad should die out soon. What, you think... You, oh, you're telling me you think gay pride marches is a social media fad? This was a pride march in London. The biggest one ever. It's not on social media. It's the opposite of social media. It wasn't on social media. It was literally people going outside. Right? There's one guy there, just a vomiting emoji. Um, now, there's someone here called R... Tarashia Bernard, or Bernard, who is a top fan, apparently, according to this comment, um, th th they're more concerned about the fact that the Daily Mail, who didn't say anything, they just reported that it was there, um, but the fact that the Daily Mail didn't make it pretty obvious that they found this vomit, like this arse openingly vomit inducingly disgusting, um, they've decided to call them out. So, Daily Mail, you believe that the size of the turnout legitimises perversion? Well, yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? I mean, the more people you've got who are into one specific thing, the more sort of like, the, the harder it is to sort of like, you know, fight against it, isn't it? So yeah. Now this is a really, really unpleasant story and I'm sure you've, you all know about it. It was a, a couple, about a month or so ago, um, there was an incident involving five young teenage, la teenage lads. They got on a bus, on the top deck of a bus, late night in London, and there were two, there was a, there was a, there was a uh, the only other people there were two, uh, you know, uh, women who were a couple, a lesbian couple, and these, these guys obviously worked out for whatever reason, I don't know why, maybe they just, you know, sniffed it out, maybe they had their, 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 their fucking les uh, hello, I'm a lesbian t-shirt, I don't know. But they decide, They started goading these women. This is what happened. These young men decided it would be okay for them to start trying to goad these women and start having, start sort of shouting at them and arraying them and demanding that they start getting, start you know copulating in front of each other for their amusement. And when these women refused to, um, these five young teenage, these five teenage boys 
beat the shit out of these two let uh, two women and then stole their phone. They even took a picture of it on their fucking on the phone before they went off. Now all of them have been arrested. All of the five bo five boys have been arrested, and thankfully. Fortunately, these two women were okay. They managed to get to the hospital and they were fine. Um, and the, the Daily Mail reported on this. Lesbian couple subjected to bus attacks speak out. Incredibly brave women. Right? But this is the worrying bit. Now, this was on the Facebook post on the Daily Mail. So here's the reacts bit. There's that little bit at the top. 16 people think this is funny. Right? They think this is funny. Now, bearing in mind, like keeping in mind what actually happened, right? What actually happened on that bus? Let's look at the reaction that that, that this is this is garnered. The day that the Daily Mail have decided to who they think is responsible, right? Stop shoving your sexuality down everyone's throats. First of all, you obviously don't know how lesbianism works, mate, because they don't have things to shove down anyone's throat. Secondly, they were literally doing it wasn't them. They were having their sexuality forced. They were having someone try and force it down their own throat. They were having someone else's sexuality forced out, forced on them. Why I can't see names of attackers? Are they hiding something? Maybe they are new Britons? Okay, the reason you can't see the name of attackers, Marco, you fucking prat, is because these were teenagers and they're too, they're not old enough for, you legally can't name them. Right, you can't name them in British press because they're too young, right? Okay, that's the rules. Keep it in your homes. Again? Shut up, but straight people get battered. Why don't we hear about this? Oh yes, we never hear about people getting assaulted who happen to be straight. We hear about that all the time. What we don't hear about, Natalie, right, is we don't hear about people getting battered because they're straight. And these comments, comments like this were just pouring through, pouring through, and then the Daily Mail, almost in a sort of, it's a, this is almost Seth, like the Daily Mail have become self-aware. It's like they're now they're now the Deadpool of conservative media. The, because the following day, the Daily Mail reported this shocking stream of online abuse is hurled at victims of homophobic London bus attack as a fifth teenager is arrested and police study CCTV. Right, so a shocking stream of abuse, literally on our website, on the articles we posted about it by the people who read our fucking. Uh, the news we post. I'm sure. I'm sure now, having seen. I'm sure. I'm sure people having seen, you know, the level of abuse. Uh, five teenagers. Five people have now been arrested for beating up two lesbians who refused to, you know, be gay in front of them for their own amusement. What do they say? I don't condone the violence at all. But perhaps it's about time the so-called LGBT community. What do you mean so-called? And you can't say so-called and then put the thing in... So-called is enough. What are you suggesting? That they're not? Started taking some responsibility for their own actions, such as kissing in public by their own admission. They... But they were being... No, it was... Get off in front of us, and if they don't, then we'll beat the shit out of you. Gay is evil, I know, and I won't support them. Let us not condemn them, but God will do... That's great, isn't it? Talk about having no self-awareness. Gay is evil. I won't support them. But let us not condemn them. But God will do. <laughs> we don't want to see it. They run the risk by flaunting it in public. Violence doesn't solve anything. However, I would love to know how those teens found out they were lesbians. Would you now? What else would you love to know? What, what other details do you want to know? Here's the fact. They were. Right? They literally were. What was the end result? Five teenage boys, two lesbians, them covered in blood and assaulted. Now, does it matter? Is what 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 could they possibly do that justify? How how, how fucking? I mean, what what act? What sexual act could they have performed that would have justified five five teenage boys beating the shit out of them and stealing their phone? What would have been justified? Yep, yep, shame on the couple. What's again? Why why does the right why do people on the right have no idea how to use air quotes? The couple, there's two of them, bruv. Congratulations for the gangs. Oh god, I hope you get your ass destroyed by a shy horse. Heterosexual and proud. <laughs> Loser! What, what do you mean heterosexual and proud? Why? Why? 
On, on what? But what have you done? What's so proud? What have you done that's so proud? Or oh, is the fact that you're heterosexual and you've literally never been within ten feet of a woman because you're electronically tagged or whatever? They were obviously attracting trouble. That's okay. Let's say that's true. They went out to get attention to try and attract trouble, but that still doesn't justify five five teenagers beating the shit out of them. It's even if you go out trying to provoke someone into a crime. Right. If that crime is still committed, it's still a crime. They didn't know they were gay, but it's Gay Pride Month, so let's play the victim card. Oh, it's like it's Gay Pride Month. Everyone's getting... What, you, so they, what do you mean? They didn't know they were gay. Oh, so they just beat the shit out of them because... It's okay. That, oh, so if they were two straight women and these guys just thought they were lesbians, or even if these guys didn't know they were lesbians, but they still were doing the same... So... I, I mean, come on! We want to know why the fuck it, where, where everything's going wrong in this world. Right there. Now, don't make the mistake, folks, that a lot of people, now, a lot of people who, who are right-wingers will come onto co these videos like this, and they'll be like, oh, you know, these are just comments on for You can go to any website and you can read stuff. No, but these people on these fucking comments, on these, on these fucking articles, these are not... These are not trolls. These are not people who are just out there, you know, trying to trigger people. You don't go on the Daily Mail website and then post offensive, bigoted, right-wing comments to offend people. That's not trolling. You would do the opposite of that. Right? And these, what these people are saying, these people haven't got a stake in the game. They're not trying to build a career out of it. So you know what they've got? They, and they've got the anonymity of being on the comment section. So they're just going to be a little bit more honest than the likes of your Ben Shapiro's are going to be. Or the likes of your Sargons, etc. Or your, or your Dave Rubens or, your, or any of the, these other fuckers. They're just not going to be as blatantly upfront. But they are playing. This is the fucking game they're playing. Don't let them get away with it. Call it out, even if they fucking keep ignoring you. Right? They like to claim that the left are too scared to debate them whilst running away from and blocking anyone who they know could have a chance at owning them. Right? They will sit there and run away. They will sit there and say things that they know are deliberate. They will purposefully say things that they know are going to offend and upset people. And when they get upset and offended and they express that, their response is, oh, facts don't care about your feelings, long triggered freedom of speech. But when you say something back to them and you say something to them that upsets them, it's like, well, this is why the left lo left keep losing. This is why Donald Trump wins. Because every time you insult people, well, you know, why, is the, why does the right get to sit there and say things as absolutely you know just ridiculous just completely fucking insane as well you know the reason there is the right's doing well is because people are turning to the right because of the way the left behave i want to know if you're going to turn to the if you're going to go from being a left winger to a right winger because of the way certain left wingers treated you or the way they acted or their personality you just didn't like them but i want to know what exactly does the right have to do for you to bounce back the other way because so far i can't see anything right i'm trying to work out what it is a couple of months ago during the european elections what was the left's big crime then? What was the left doing that was just making things worse and you're just create you're just you know what will we get what was what did I have to sit there and listen to people just turn into this actual real severe you know, talk talk to me like this was a severe issue. It was people it was Sargon and, and Tommy Robinson had a couple of milkshakes thrown at them. Owen Jones yeah, Owen Jones, the journalist, the, the, the guy who's the journalist who like writes with the Guardian, gay guy, gets the shit beaten out of him by four guys the other night, and he took that fucking beating, and he dealt with it and reacted to it with a level of fucking dignity, and with a level of fucking strength and f just absolute character that Sargon of a car does not have in his fucking ass crack hair. I'm sick of seeing these people get away with it. I'm sick of seeing them hide behind it and you need to stop because this is the game they're playing where they will sit there and blame a lesbian, two women, right? For, you know, it's their own fault that five men beat the shit out of them on a bus. Why? Because they were lesbians. 
and they, they made it, and apparently it was obvious they were lesbians and you can't do anything, because freedom of speech and freedom of society, but you can't do anything. And everything else is a victim card. Right when it's the, when it's you know right, when it's a minority oh it's the race card oh it's the gay card oh it's the trans they're always playing the victim card well the Daily Mail just fu accidentally unintentionally they fucked up and they showed me they gave me the perfect reason I'm going to show you this this is what the victim card is bearing in mind what we've seen go by so far what you've seen these people defend. Now, back when, uh, back in, I believe it was June, a couple of months ago, um, uh, when Glastonbury Festival, Glastonbury Festival, you all know, there was an article in the Daily Mail, and I'll just show you, that this was the article here, like, why the F would you wear that here, brave soul, Don's I Love Brexit t-shirt in the heart of liberal Glastonbury Festival, and is amazed that not all of the comments were abusive. That's a news story. A guy went to Glastonbury wearing a t-shirt that said, I love Brexit, and apparently he wasn't skinned alive and buggered and burnt in a giant wick of phallus. About that, let's have a look at the story. One reveller called the wearer brave and a legend and warned that he could get fucking killed. Well, there you go then. I mean, that's it, isn't it, right? Glastonbury has long been associated with left-wing activism. Not really. To test the anti-Brexit sentiment among the crowd, one festival goer, one festival goer wore an I Love Brexit t-shirt and recorded the reaction. There were some positive responses. A steward ensuring bod nobody was hurt while crossing the road shouted, I love Brexit, that's fucking class. Of course, forgetting, of course, there are significant there's not a huge amount but there are people on the left who support brexit for different reasons right one glastonbury reveler asked for a selfie with the eye-catching attire while others muttered snide comments that's it snide comment others muttered snide comments and suppressed laughs but for the most part people didn't fucking care right so what is the so what out of the people in the how do the daily mail readers react to this story guy goes to glastonbury Right, SJW Central with an I Love Brexit T-shirt, and most people are like take it as a joke or don't mind or go good on ya or you know. But most people don't react, and the few negative reactions he gets are just people going, "Oh, fucking cunt." That's it. Well, this was the reaction that the Daily Mail readers gave. Funny how liberals don't like the freedoms of being uh, being untied from bureaucracy, endless red tape rules and regulations. They actually prefer the little cogs in a controlling machine. Normal attitude of the commie-loving anarchists and champagne socialists. Free speech is only applicable if they agree with it. Right? Again, no one suppressed this guy's freedom of speech. No one censored this guy. Most people, from the sounds of it, gave positive reactions to it. And that's it. But these people have read it because there was a few that snide comments and a few people murmuring. That is apparently, apparently their freedom of speech doesn't matter. Strange how liberal lefties want freedom of speech, etc., until it clashes with their opinion. Again, apparently if you are a Remainer and you go on a march or you voice your opinion, it's shut up, you lose, get over it, stop being so anti-democratic. Ah, the tolerant left who shows itself once again to be as unaccepting and violent toward... Again, violent! This, this, is, this did not happen! They're making... The, this is not... They haven't even read the article. But that's not where it ends. It gets a little bit more interesting, you see, because because when you go back and look at the article again, there's now again, you I read it to you, you saw the pictures, then there's this bit here. It's the Londoner who wished to stay anonymous revealed his favourite political stack that more people voted for. Wow, he's got a favourite political stack. He sounds like a right laugh. I wanna get fucked up with this guy. Hello, I've got an I Love Brexit t-shirt. Do you wanna hear my favourite political stack? No, fuck off. But the Londoner who wished to remain anonymous. Right, right. Well, let's have a look at that, shall we? Now, just in case you, in case you're not sure, that, that this, let's get a closer picture. This is the picture. Now, in case you're not sure, now, I was wondering, well, you know, how did they find this guy? Well, the best place to start by looking to figure out how they found this guy would be to look at who wrote the article. Now, this article was written by, as you can see, Joe Pinkstone. Joe Pinkston at Glassman. So, Joe Pinkstone. Right, so Joe Pinkstone, right, okay. By this, so this article was written by Joe Pinkstone. Now, who is Joe Pinkstone? Who the hell is Joe Pinkstone? Oh, oh, that, oh, hold on. So the, the, the thing on the right, that's, that's his Twitter, I believe. And 
I don't know about you. Does that does that guy does that guy on the right does the Joe Pinkstone on the right look a lot like the guy who's in the Brexit article? Does that does that look fucking familiar? Does that look familiar to you? Um, I don't know. Well, this was a picture on his on his Instagram. Joe Pinkstone's Instagram was a picture of him. This is literally about the day before uh, Glastonbury, where he's like talking about how he's now he's tr- he's got a bad leg. He's up in hospital and that. And then if you look at the oh look at that look at their legs. Look at that. Well, isn't that fucking fascinating? Isn't that interesting? So, this anonymous Londoner who went to, who bravely went to Brexit and, and didn't get you know, a lot of people, and a lot of people didn't really give him shit. He got some you know, positive reactions, but overall, most people were there to enjoy the festival, not fucking worry about some cunt who had an I Love Brexit t-shirt on. But this wasn't an anonymous guy. This wasn't a random dude. This wasn't some geezer who just went out there to see what we could get. No, this was the same guy who wrote the Daily Mail article. He wrote the article, he went there, and then wrote an article about himself pretending that he was an, a random person at the festival and obviously going there in the hope they could stoke something up or the hope that they would get some reaction. But he didn't get anything. He didn't get anything. He got a few snide comments and most people didn't care. That's the victim card there, folks. You know, those two women on the bus who got beaten up, they're just playing the victim card. Oh, we don't know. They, they, that, no one knew they were lesbian. You're just playing the, oh, the, the gay victim card. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? If the, it, well, this ain't even a victim card because you didn't even get, you weren't even a victim of anything. But you went there to deliberately make yourself one. And that's the reality. If that's the only way you can make yourself a victim. And even if you get no reaction, you get no response, you don't get the, you know, the, typh- the, the typhoon of violence wa- you know, waged upon you that you're looking for, even if you don't get that, you'll just pretend it is anyway. You will fucking just lie because it doesn't matter. Because you don't care. And when, you don't, and when you don't care and it doesn't matter, you can believe anything the fuck you want because you can get away with it. And nothing sums it up. Nothing sums up this fucking whole, you know, the whole point I'm trying to make than this one comment posted by Handsome M in London. Stand your ground in the face of adversity for the right thing. He's basically the new Rosa Parks. That's Rosa Parks, ladies and gentlemen. That is where we are, that's where they are. And I've got nothing else to add to that, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you again, hopefully, not too not too far away from now. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video and you, you know, you're not a subscriber, then fucking hit the button, click the bell and all the other shit. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so. The link is below. If you want to make a donation on PayPal, you can do that below. This is what I do for a living. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a job, ladies and gentlemen. I can't work. I'm too physically in, uh, incapable to work. So this is what I do. So any support on Patreon, any support via PayPal, is very much appreciated other than that give me a like give me a comment and i will see you very soon (sighs) the the new rosa parks